Women's rights have come a long way in the last thousand years, however, there's still a part of Greece where women are not allowed to set foot. Mount Athos is located at the easternmost tip of the three peninsulas that make up Chalcidice, Greece. Its history is long and somewhat unbelievable. For over a thousand years, it's been home to Orthodox monks who live by strict rules. As you can probably guess, the rule forbidding women was for the benefit of the monks to remove temptation, but there is much more to this law than meets the eye. Human females are not the only ones who are forbidden to come within 500 meters of Mount Athos. The rule includes keeping females of any kind, including animals. But before we can understand why this crazy law was put into place, we must travel back in time to the founding of Mount Athos and uncover the deeper reason why women have been banned from this area of the world. Mount Athos consists of 20 monasteries. The mount itself is around 130 square miles in size, making it the largest area of the world where women are legally not allowed. There are over 2,000 monks from around the planet currently residing in Mount Athos, but the first monastery was started long ago by only a handful of individuals. These first monks were on the run from the Roman Empire during the first century. At the time, being Christian in a pagan world could be dangerous. Christians were tortured, thrown in arenas, and crucified for their beliefs. Mount Athos allowed Christians a place to escape persecution due to its isolation. However, it wouldn't be until many centuries later that the first monasteries were built and the monks officially gained control of the area. In 963, St. Athanasius the Athenite pleaded with the rich to fund the first monastery at Mount Athos. Eventually, he came across a Byzantine imperial patron named Nisiphorus II Phokas, who agreed to fund his venture. The first monastery at Mount Athos was built using Nisiphorus' money and named Great Laura. Many of the monks who had been living in the area originally rejected the call to the organized monastic community. But with the ruling of Byzantine Emperor John I Zemeises, the new order was forced upon them, and the first charter, also known as Typicon, was written up. Under the leadership of Athenite, the entire culture of the monks shifted to a stricter subgroup of Christianity. This eventually came to be known as Athenite Orthodoxy. This conversion and the writing of their Typicon led to what's still one of the only places in the world where women cannot set foot. On the surface, this new order of monks seemed to be similar to other Orthodox groups, yet they were bound by much stricter constraints than most when within the territory of Mount Athos. The Typicon held all of the laws that must be followed. This not only included laws for the monks, but for anyone who entered the territory of Mount Athos. The monks themselves were given authority to rule and enforce the region's laws by the Byzantine Emperor. And as long as the monks kept to themselves and did not cause any trouble outside of their walls, the rulers of Byzantium were happy to let them continue their religious practices of strict laws and devout prayer. Therefore, even though the rest of Greece had no problem letting women enter the country, Mount Athos adopted and maintained their strict no-girls-allowed policy and took it to the extreme. There was also a series of other laws written into the Typicon of Mount Athos. Like most monks, they weren't allowed to have any valuable personal possessions. Everything that they had belonged to the church and God. This included jewelry, nice clothing, and land. The monks were given simple robes, and the church provided anything else they might need in life. As long as you were male, these were a sect of equal opportunity monks. No one was allowed to be discriminated against based on their birthplace. This meant that monks of all different cultures and locations could come to Mount Athos, give up everything, and devote their lives to God. This was somewhat progressive for the time. Unfortunately, the same courtesy was not extended to the admittance of women. Any monk who decided to stay at Mount Athos must adhere to protos orthodox belief systems of the monasteries there. This form of Christianity was extremely conservative. Their belief system held that martyrdom or dying for the Christian religion was one of the highest honors and greatest acts that someone could do in the name of God. This belief did not extend to waging wars in the name of Christianity, but if a monk was given the opportunity to give his life for God, he should gladly welcome the opportunity. An even stranger belief associated with the Protoss Orthodox ideological system had to do with a closely related religion to Christianity, Judaism. Although Christians and Jews used parts of the same holy text, the Protoss Orthodox monks believed that people of the Jewish faith always had worshipped and still did worship a false religion. When you think about it, this seems confusing, as the Old Testament of Christianity and the Torah are filled with many of the same stories and teachings. They start with the same creation story, and pretty much every book in the Old Testament can be found in the Jewish teachings. But the Protoss Orthodox beliefs of the monks at Mount Athos clearly stated that the Jewish faith was based around a false religion. The most controversial law of all was the one that the monks at Mount Athos imposed against women. It's interesting to note that the Typicon of Mount Athos does not explicitly say no women are allowed. The law actually only refers to female animals. 
It's assumed by many scholars that the law of no women within Mount Athos territory was an unwritten one as it was obvious that females shouldn't be allowed around the monks. However, human females might have also just been lumped into the same category as other female animals, which almost seems worse than explicitly stating that no women were allowed at Mount Athos. Even if it wasn't written in the Typicon, the monks made sure this law was clear as their people entered the territory. A gigantic sign sits at the entrance to Mount Athos welcoming pilgrims and monks. On the sign are the words, the entrance of women is entirely forbidden. What is a real reason that no females are allowed within the monk-controlled region of Mount Athos? There are plenty of other monasteries which nuns and women of faith are allowed into for services and official church business, so why not Mount Athos as well? But one of the reasons is truly unique. The most obvious reason for the no women allowed rule is to help the monks maintain celibacy. According to Genesis, women are the source of the original sin. When Eve took a bite of the forbidden fruit, humanity was plunged into a world of corruption. It's probably unfair to put all of the blame on women, but that's just how it is if the Bible is to be interpreted literally which very few Christians do, of course, but that's the way the proto-Orthodox monks look at it. The monks do not hate women, they respect and love them as children of God. If a monk leaves the grounds of the monastery, they are more than welcome to interact with females, but to make sure that the sins of women and the temptation of men remain outside of Mount Athos, the law says no women are allowed within 500 meters of the monasteries. The law of no females in Mount Athos was most likely created to reduce the temptation of females for the monks but it's hard to believe this was put in place solely to address the problem of remaining celibate. According to monks in the Orthodox Church, there is a much deeper and more important reason that no females are allowed on Mount Athos, a reason that is shrouded in mystery and could even be more significant than sex. An important tradition and deeply held belief associated with the area of Mount Athos dates all the way back to the early days of Christianity. Legend has it that the Virgin Mary left Jerusalem after the crucifixion of her son. Some claim she was headed for Europe. France in particular, where she spent the rest of her days. Others believe she fled to Turkey, where she was eventually entombed at Ephesus. Regardless of where Mary ended up, the monks at Mount Athos and many other Christian scholars believe that on the way to her final destination, the Virgin Mary ship was blown off course in the Mediterranean. At the monasteries, the legend states that she was aiming for Cyprus, but due to the terrible storm, she landed on Mount Athos. Mary was said to find the area so beautiful that she prayed to her son. Strangely, as the monks believe the prayer included Mary asking for Jesus to give her the land. This seems odd, as Mount Athos is not considered her final resting place. But why would the mother of Jesus even want to own a piece of land right after her son died for all of humanity's sins? At the time, women couldn't technically own the land anyway, so it's unclear what the Virgin Mary would do with Mount Athos. Regardless of what actually happened, the area is considered a holy site. The belief in this story and the law forbidding females of any kind has an even stranger connection. Apparently, when Jesus agreed to give Mary Mount Athos, it became endowed with the supernatural. It's claimed that once the land was given to the Virgin Mary, she was to be the only woman to set foot on Mount Athos ever again. This land is still called the Garden of the Mother God. The laws forbidding females on Mount Athos are not only the rules of man, but a covenant with God. Wild animals like birds cannot be controlled even by the Christian church, so there are female wild animals that are considered okay at Mount Athos, there is a rule that female cats can walk the lands as well. It's not clear why they're the only domesticated animal where the female of the species is allowed to roam freely, but the monks seem to be partial to the cats as they don't try to get rid of them. One reason for letting female cats stay might be to help with pest control. Since there are a lot of mice, having a lot of cats might be beneficial for the monks at Mount Athos. Having a law that bans females of any kind besides wild animals and cats results in a few problems. The monks need to import food like eggs and milk to get the sustenance they require. They can't drink cat milk, felines don't lay eggs, and this means food can get expensive unless people donate it out of the goodness of their hearts or because they think it'll save their mortal soul. The monks are reported to not eat much, especially if it comes from female animals, but they do enjoy cheese on their salads. It also seems that although eggs aren't necessarily year-round, the monks do require them on Easter as one of their traditions is to paint them red. Obviously, there's no Easter Bunny, but the tradition of painting the eggs is done to commemorate Jesus emerging from the tomb and his resurrection. Therefore, large quantities of eggs are delivered to Mount Athos during the Easter season. But the hens who laid them are not allowed within 500 meters of the monasteries. It's also interesting to note that young boys are not allowed to enter Mount Athos unless they can grow a beard or have someone else vouch for them. Also, when eunuchs were still prevalent, they were barred from entering the region. This is stated because of the fear that women could disguise themselves as a young boy or a eunuch 
to gain entry to the monastery. There doesn't seem to be any evidence that this ever happened, but out of precaution, the rules of Mount Athos state that unless the monks can be sure a young boy is in fact a male, they are not allowed near the monasteries. It also isn't clear why women would want to disguise themselves to gain access to a bunch of monks. This brings us to an interesting point. Although it's illegal for women to be within 500 meters of Mount Athos, there have been several times where this rule has been broken, and it wasn't always without the knowledge of the monks. During the Greek Civil War from 1946 to 1949, the monks of Mount Athos gave sanctuary to shepherds and their flocks. However, a raiding party followed them to the monasteries and entered the lands looking for the animals. Among the raiding party were women and female children. The monks did not have the means to stop the raid, which meant the females had stepped foot on the holy ground of Mount Athos. The next female to enter Mount Athos was a little more sneaky. In 1953, a Greek woman disguised herself as a man and spent three days at one of the monasteries. Her name was Maria Poimenidou, and it seems as if she had no malicious intent upon infiltrating Mount Athos other than satisfying her curiosity. It was after Poimenidou's ruse was discovered and she was removed from Mount Athos that Greece passed a law prohibiting women from entering the region. Up until that point, the only law banning women from Mount Athos was the one in the Typicon. Greece itself offered no legal repercussions if someone entered the sacred area. However, the monks did have the authority to remove any women from their borders and refuse females access to the region. This was supported by Greece, but there were never formal laws put in place by the country until after the incident with Maria Poimenidou. Then Greece passed a law that formally prohibited women from entering Mount Athos. It also included a maximum penalty of 12 months in prison for anyone caught breaking the law. Not only did the monks have the power to keep women out of the region, but the Greek authorities also had legal precedents to enforce the rule. This only reinforced further no girls allowed policies that had been happening for over a thousand years. In 2008, four women from Moldova were surprised when they were arrested for being in Mount Athos. They had no idea as there were laws in place forbidding females in the area. All the women wanted was some help as they had been dropped off on the coast by human traffickers. They most likely saw the monasteries and assumed the monks would help them as servants of God. However, upon being discovered by some of the monks, the authorities were brought in and the women were taken to custody. When questioned, the women told the police and the monks they were sorry, but they had no way of knowing that Mount Athos was a no-women-allowed area. Luckily for the refugees, the monks accepted their apologies and forgave them. No charges were brought against the women and they were released from custody. Even with the rest of the world progressing around women's rights, the monks and their traditions in Mount Athos remain staunchly in the past. There seems to be no serious consideration around changing the ban on women by the monks. Within the Greek government, there's been a discussion around trying to change the country's law to allow for women to visit the area, but even that has remained in effect. In 2017, an equality law was introduced that would remove the ban on women from any region of Greece. This would in theory allow for women to have access to Mount Athos, but the law is yet to pass. And even if it did, there's no indication that the rules of Mount Athos would change. Up until 1953, there was no national law that prohibited women from entering the monasteries, yet the monks were able to keep them out for almost a thousand years. Unless the government intervenes, this will continue to be the case. The religious ideologies are deeply ingrained in the monks who live at Mount Athos, and they will not succumb to the whims of men or women when they have God on their side. Their deeply held religious beliefs and traditions will always trump the progress of any outside law giving females access to the region. Whether this is right or wrong can be debated. Some would argue that the religious beliefs of the monks who have been in control of their land for centuries should be respected. Others claim it's a sign of oppression that must be ended. But Mount Athos is not the only location where women are banned. Around the world, there are instances of men-only establishments. For example, the Sabarimala Temple in India does not allow women between the ages of 10 and 50 to enter. This is because women around those ages could be fertile, which is not permitted when worshipping in the temple. The Sabarimala Temple is the house of the deity lord Ayapa, who is said not to want menstruating women in his temple out of respect for the demon Malika Puratama. Lord Ayapa defeated Malika Puratama in battle and afterwards she proposed to him. Lord Ayapa said he would marry her on the day that worshippers stopped visiting him at Sabarimala. Therefore, to ensure that Lord Ayapa does not have to marry the lady demon, the devoted followers come to the temple every day to pray. And to make sure that Lord Ayapa remains happy, fertile women are kept from entering the temple. There also might be a different reason for the ban on women at Sabarimala, which is similar to Mount Athos. A separate legend says that Lord Ayapa was a historical figure who gave up all worldly possessions, including sex and contact with women. He then defeated an invading army led by an Arabian ruler named Babar or Vavar. 
The temple of Sabarimala that is dedicated to him banned women during their fertile years out of respect for Ayapa giving up his worldly desires. This is similar to the monks who are trying to remain celibate on Mount Athos. It's also in line with having a piece of land dedicated to a spiritual figure such as the monks did with the Virgin Mary. Both Mount Athos and Sabarimala ban women due to the religious beliefs, which is a completely different reason than why women are not allowed in this next place. The Burning Tree Club in Bethesda, Maryland is an old-school gentleman-only club that is proud of maintaining its ban on women. It's almost unbelievable that any place could still exist in the United States that does not allow women to enter, but it's because Burning Tree pays an extra $150,000 in taxes each year that it can keep its discriminatory policies. There are no female bathrooms and the staff isn't afraid to turn women away at the door. The craziest thing is that women's rights seem to have a price in Maryland and that price is 150000 But besides the temples and golf clubs, are there any other large areas like Mount Athos that does not allow women? Mount Omine in Nara, Japan is a pilgrimage destination for men of the Shugendo religion. The religion combines the belief systems of Buddhism and Shinto and the ancient local beliefs of the region. Along the trail leading up to the top of the mountain are signs warning that no women are allowed. However, this rule is not enforced. The original purpose was to keep away temptation when on the journey to Mount Omine. The ban on women is actually not monitored by anyone. It's a voluntary agreement that people can choose to accept or ignore. The only repercussions of women hiking the trail to Mount Omine are judgmental looks and maybe an exchange of words around respecting people's beliefs and customs. Perhaps the most surprising places that women are banned from are sports arenas. To be more specific, we're talking about soccer arenas in Iran. Granted, there are some pretty outdated laws in the country around women's rights, but not letting them view a soccer game seems a little odd. The bizarre law came about at the same time the conservative religious theocracy was put in place during the 70s. The thought behind it was that women could see men dressed in inappropriate clothing such as shorts and have ideas about coveting a man other than their husband. But even after nearly 50 years, little progress has been made around Iranian women attending sporting events. In 2019, Sahar Kodayari was arrested when she entered the stadium to watch a soccer match. After she was released from prison, Kodayari set herself on fire in front of the local courthouse as a sign of protest. This caused the international community to take a closer look at the suppression of women in Iran. Now, Iran sells a pretty small number of tickets for certain sporting events to women. However, this gesture is pretty meaningless in the scheme of things. This brings us back to Mount Athos. It's the only piece of land where the prohibition of women is enforced, that is, unless you count golf courses. Private businesses might seem to have the ability to keep women out for a fee, but with societal progress this might be a thing of the past. Some religions seem to be holding firm on certain outdated beliefs such as not allowing women in temples or monasteries, but it may only be a matter of time until even those institutions succumb to the pressure of progress. Now watch weird facts about the female body, or check out why prisons ban these everyday items.